Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Ding. My voice. My story. My dream. Innovation Dialogue. We are encouraged by their story. Hi, I'm Congressman Ted Liu. I represent the 33rd Congressional District in Southern California. It goes from Malibu south through Manhattan Beach to Palos Verdes along the coast. And I also go east and get West Los Angeles, Bel Air, and Beverly Hills. That's great. So, uh, so tell us, what's your priority for your district? Uh, all of us deal with a thousand issues every day. I believe there's only one issue that can kill us as a species, and that's climate change. When I was in the California State Legislature, I was a co-author of California's Global Warming Solutions Act, one of the strongest bills in the nation on mitigating climate change. In Congress, the first bill I wrote and authored was to take California's climate change laws and replicate it nationwide. I believe the way we solve the global warming problem is to have America do what California has done, and then the rest of the world to do what California has done. So what uh, the role that American or California can play for saving the water and also help this climate change? Technology can play a big role. Also just making sure that more and more people are aware of climate change and the devastating effect it's having on our environment and trying to get people in Congress to support legislative action. I'm very pleased that we have more and more institutions supporting climate change laws. We now have two institutions normally not known as progressive, such as the Catholic Church and the U.S. military that's saying climate change is a problem, we need to do something about it. And so I've introduced the Climate Solutions Act of 2015 uh, that will again replicate California's climate change laws nationwide. So can you imagine uh, 10 years or 20 years later what the climate change will be improved in your imagination? I have uh, two young children, they're nine years old and 12 years old. I want them and their children to have at least the same or better environment than we have. And if we don't start taking action to reduce carbon out of the air, we're going to have very severe climate changes in the coming decades. We know that we already had the hottest year in record history last year, only to be outdone by the first six months of this year. We know we have more extreme climate events than ever before. We know ocean levels are rising. We can measure all of this, and it's time to take action on climate change. Yes, you also uh, uh, have a great attention to the information technology, right? Yes, I'm on the information technology subcommittee of the House Oversight Committee. We've held a number of hearings on technology, on cybersecurity. Uh, unfortunately, in the federal government, we have not been doing cybersecurity well. We've had some people resign. We need to have a whole culture change and better technology across all our federal agencies to defend against the cyber attacks that we're getting each and every day. Uh, we're in a cyber war right now, and we need everyone to understand that. I'm also a very um, scared of what law enforcement is trying to do in terms of our privacy. Uh, they have had proposals out there to weaken encryption systems, uh, to spy on Americans, and I've been pushing back on that. I don't believe that we should put in back doors, for example, in our encryption systems or in consumer products such as cell phones. I think we need to make sure that we have strong encryption and not allow law enforcement to be able to weaken those encryption systems. So, President of uh, People's Republic of China, Mr. Xi Jinping, just visited the United States, and have you discussed this? And uh, what do you think about the, his visit? Uh, I was uh, at the rival ceremony uh, for President Xi Jinping's visit, uh, as well as uh, the state lunch. I'm very pleased that. China and the United States have now uh, engaged together on climate change. Uh, there is now agreement that climate change is a problem, and both countries are taking actions uh, to reduce carbon and to reduce methane and other greenhouse gases, and that's a huge step forward. I know that President Obama has also talked privately to uh, President Xi Jinping on uh, the cyber attacks uh, that have come from China, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, go forward on those issues. And I think it's important that we continue to maintain good relations between two, two countries, as well as 
because of the commerce that we have between the two countries. And you are the few Democratic the, that uh, rejected the Iran deal. And uh, can you tell us uh, what's your most yeah. concern about it? It was a close call. Uh, this is a very complicated deal. I think reasonable people can look at it and come out on both sides. You've had Democrats oppose it. You've had Democrats support it. And the reason I uh, did not support it is because at the end of this deal, um, certain provisions expire. And at some point between 10 and 15 years, Iran's nuclear breakout time drops down to where it is today or even lower. And after 15 years, this deal allows Iran to have a vast nuclear infrastructure. The deal also lifts the ballistic missile ban in year eight. It lifts the arms embargo in year five. Uh, that allows Iran to build up its military, uh, to build up its ballistic missiles, to export weapons uh, to its terrorist proxies and brutal proxy regimes. And those are some of the reasons I voted against the deal. Well, this deal has already approved. So what you can do and what we can do next? Uh, the best thing to do now is to implement the deal the best that we can. Like what? Uh, we have to make sure that Iran does not cheat. Uh, we have to make sure uh, that Iran lives up to the terms of the deal. And it's going to require constant cooperation between the Congress and the executive branch. Mm -hmm. So what's your plan and what's your goal to achieve as a congressman? I'm sorry, say that what's again? What's your goal to achieve? What's your, yeah, what's your plan for the next five or ten years? Uh, so I would like to get climate change legislation passed. I'm also uh, very passionate about civil rights. We've had a number of federal cases uh, where Americans have been arrested, indicted for espionage and spying, and then having all those charges dropped. And the one thing that runs through all these cases is those people happen to be Asian American. And that's a problem. That's why I wrote a letter to uh, the Attorney General of the United States, Loretta Lynch. I got 21 other members of Congress to sign it, asking for a full investigation. Uh, since that letter, we had another case happen of uh, Professor Xi at Temple University. Twelve FBI agents uh, entered his house with guns drawn. They handcuffed him, arrested him, took him away while his daughters and wife watched. They charged him for espionage because he allegedly had the blueprints uh, for a pocket heater that he was sharing with China. Well, it turns out that the blueprints were not for a pocket heater, and those blueprints were not restricted or sensitive. The DOJ, Department of Justice, uh, dropped all the charges. But it's cases like this that give us great concern, uh, many members of Congress, uh, looking at this because we believe that otherwise innocent actions by Americans don't become suspicious simply because the American taking those actions happens to be a minority, happens to be an Asian American. So do you think why this happened? Is there a major misunderstanding here? Well, America is an amazing country. Uh, my parents immigrated here. Uh, they didn't speak English well. They were poor. Uh, through hard work, they were able to um, build up uh, six gift stores and shopping malls, and they achieved the American dream. It's one reason that I entered politics and entered the U.S. Air Force on active duty to keep this dream remain open. Uh, but our country has had blind spots, and we've had a history of discrimination against Asian Americans. And we had a whole yellow peril hysteria earlier in our country's history. Uh, that was followed by the alien land laws and the Chinese Exclusion Act. Uh, we then had the internment of over 100,000 of Americans who happened to be of Japanese descent during World War II. Uh, we had the Wen Ho Lee case uh, when he was uh, put into solitary confinement for nine months for alleged spying, only have all those charges dropped. Uh, we then had the case of Sherry Chen, uh, who uh, was also arrested and indicted for alleged spying, all to have those charges dropped. We have Professor Xi now, as well as multiple similar cases. Uh, so we need to make sure that our federal government is not targeting and singling out Asian Americans uh, for actions that would be completely innocent if they were being conducted by a Caucasian. So what's your suggestion for other Asian Americans? Uh, to speak up, uh, to report cases uh, to Congress. I'm on the House Oversight Committee. You can contact my office. Uh, we have a Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus in Congress. You can contact uh, KPAC as a group. That's what it's known as. There are legal organizations uh, such as NAPABA, the National Asian Pacific American um, 
Bar Association. Uh, you also have a legal organization known as Advancing Justice uh, that takes on cases, civil rights cases. So contact these groups, make your voice heard, and uh, that's the best way to prevent this from happening in the future. We are a Silicon Valley Innovation Channel, so what's your definition for innovation uh, in one sentence? Um, American. That's one word. I'll give you one sentence. Okay. Uh, America is not going to succeed making socks. Uh, we only succeed uh, in areas where we have a competitive advantage. Innovation, technology, uh, those are some of the areas where we have a competitive advantage. And I will continue to push and make sure that these industries continue to compete in America. Very good. Thank you. Uh, to uh, the Ding Ding TV audience, I am Congressman Ted Liu. I'm honored to have just done my first interview on Ding Ding TV. Hopefully I will be able to do more. And uh, thank you for watching and thank you for supporting Ding Ding TV. I know Ted because uh, I was very lucky that before his last election, I gave uh, a fundraiser in my home and had about uh, 40 to 50 people attended. And uh, that, uh, I think, uh, shows the strong support from the Asian American community to Ted. I know Ted for actually quite a few years now. And uh, he first came to us and uh, he's a very honest man and came from very humble uh, uh, beginning and being very uh, solid, be very sincere, very down to earth. And uh, let me say, not uh, too much of the politician flavor in his uh, behaviors and in his statement. And, uh, and he always said he's lucky because his position was uh, so, so make him easy winning. But we Chinese always say that uh, the heaven only helps those people that help themselves. And uh, he's well pre prepared to go higher places and we wish him luck. And we notice that he's, he take strong position in helping uh, De diffused the uh, discrimination issues uh, in the uh, Congress. And uh, so we're wishing uh, all the luck and uh, he'll be going places and uh, the, the lots of things he can do for our community and for the Asian Americans. Okay, t today we're so glad uh, Ted come to uh, uh, come to uh, together with us, and we understand what he's doing in the Congress. And uh, uh, it's very important that we have this kind of representation in the state and the federal level. Certainly, we need a much, much more. But that really reflects what AAGG tried to do, is get more Asian American participation in the political process. And we need a good candidate, we need the people support the uh, campaign, and we need uh, more and more people to represent us. So I'm so glad today's event uh, is a very good turnout, turn and uh, Ted certainly is a very capable legislature and, uh, to represent us. Thank you. Yeah, I've known Ted Liu for some 20 years now. The first time I met him was a uh, OCA convention, Organization of Chinese American Convention in Washington, D.C. I went to attend it on behalf of our region, and he was there probably representing LA. We were waiting to enter the gala in the evening in line, and it was a very long wait. I saw this um, somewhat uh, diminutive Chinese American wearing American military uniform, and that intrigued me because of his. It's very unusual to see a Chinese American in the U.S. military, especially back then. So we struck up a conversation, and I talked about various things. I found him to be a very intelligent young man. He's an attorney. He has a computer science background, impeccable academics, uh, Stanford and Georgetown. Nevertheless, he joined the U.S. military. So I remember his name. And uh, some years later, I read in the Chinese newspaper, 
that he was running for a tour in city council. So I so, thought, well, this young man deserves the support. So I sent him a small check, and ever since then I've been following him to see what he does, what he, whether he cares about our community. So when he went to the state assembly, he started to show his leadership abilities. He started to help other Asian Americans to promote them into government positions, both by appointments and by uh, election. And he's helped many, many others who are maybe even somewhat, maybe not even young, older than him because he's not that old, um, to, um, to advance in their careers. And he helped to appoint judges. Uh, he helped to uh, make the nonprofits, foundations in the California to um, grant more money, more support for Asian American nonprofits. He's done a great deal to our community. And since he's been in Congress, it's just, just been about a year, a little over a year, he's already done quite a bit of work for us. Um, he's the leader to send a letter to Attorney General Lynch about the Sherry Chen and Professor C's case of arrest without evidence, uh, then some really dropped the charges without a apology without consequences for those who neglected their duties and caused great harm to the victim and their families. And uh, Ted is going to press on this. I really admire him for doing so at somewhat of a risk for offending the administration uh, for our community. So I, I find him to be very sympathetic to our cause. He has our community at heart. I really think we should support him wholeheartedly so he can continue to be our voice He's very young, he's 40, I think he's like 47 or something. He may be in Congress for 40 years. And remember, Congress, everything's based on seniority. If he's there 40 years, he'll be a committee chairman um, someday, and he'll wield great power. And um, as long as he has our communities in mind, he's going to be a leader in, our, in the entire U.S. for Asian Americans. I really think he deserves it, and I really think he deserves our support. Ted Lu is a leader. I really think that he will make a great congressman. Also, he has a background of being a lawyer as well as a computer major as well. So his thinking is really, really rational, and actually he can make himself very impressive to the other, you know, congressman in college. I heard him talk about this Cheryl Chen case, about this implicit discrimination about Asian American or Chinese American because of the spying case, and he had to make a very, 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 you know, outstanding case to the Attorney General that these kind of, a, you know, case, this kind of action should be stopped. And I'm really very, very impressed by Ted as our Congressman. As a startup in Silicon Valley, innovation is our DNA. It's inside our blood. What is innovation? Very confident. It's a way of thinking. It's a philosophy. It's a mindset. Uh, it's very closely related to leadership. For me, it's really about finding the right, the right fit between the product and the market. Have a strong technology position, a, a strong market impact. Innovation can be an idea can be a product, can be a service, or can be a thinking. It can be everything out of box thinking, not limited to your background, to the past. Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Ding, and today we are going to talk about Cloud Festival. Today we have Carrie Davis, and she's here to share her story, which is so inspiring. What we are doing here is to summarize, bring out the point, and give a good presentation. Help people to bring out their idea to the whole world. It's very important to be able to spot uh, human talent and to be a good leader. More importantly, it's how our corporate and, and partners perceive the value that's come out of the event. It was all about 
uh, seizing the opportunity rather than looking at the world as a set of problems. I want to change the paradigm of angel investing being local. I want all of us to think global and to look at great opportunities in Asia or Europe, wherever it is in the world. Come, come to Dingling TV. Let us work together to bring out your idea to share with the whole world.